ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome. We've been looking at old pistons and cylinders, and new pistons and cylinders, and today we're going to be mounting said pistons and cylinders onto the engine. And I'm just going to show you a fairly easy way of doing it. Uh, now then various things number one uh, the good news is that uh, the cotter pin or wrist pin if you're American slides in beautifully okay. that's fine which is going to make fitting the piston find the flat side look there's the flat side so you're going to be able to slide you've got the holes out there you'll be able to slide on and pass the pin in through here through and directly in see what you're going to have to remember is to make sure that you have put the circlip in and make sure you do it on the right side so when you prepare this one up it'll have the circlip that side so it can go in like that right and then you're going to have to put the circlip in on the other side now let's talk about circlips circlips my preferred style of circlip is the traditional Volkswagen one however things move on be careful it's thin and fragile you know because The land, the groove for the Mahler Volkswagen is definitely large enough to accommodate this comfortably so that it sits right down in the groove. All right? But when I tried one in here, it, it, the groove is different. The groove is smaller. It doesn't sit so well. And so on. So you're going to have to have uh, the correct set of pliers. And if you're going to be doing a Volkswagen engine, if you're going to be doing several of them, I would recommend that you get a pair of these because I assure you they are going to make me fitting the circlip uh, so much easier. Okay. Now then, this one, obviously, now that I popped the piston out to check the rings I'm going to have to use a ring compressor which goes down like this and then winds up as it goes nice and tight and then it's all lined up and then a couple of little pats and down it goes gently not breaking the piston rings obviously because if you break one ring you've got to buy a set for four uh, now then uh, when the engine is eventually, so we're going to be using the standard clips and all the rest of it. Now then, when the cylinder, the barrel, is on the block, and you're at top dead centre, and you've got the piston in, you then have the distance between the top of the piston and the top of the deck. And that's to regulate, that is the deck height, and because I'm running a van, uh, I am going to use decompressor rings, one per cylinder, which goes on the base of the cylinder. In other words, it goes here, you see? Goes here, and then that way, it will do two things. It will slightly lower the compression, 
we'll work all that out later on I'll show you how that's worked out and the second thing is uh, that we're not messing around doing anything to the cylinder head to 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 damage it you know lapping and all the rest of it okay so I'm going to leave you there for a while now and I'm going to put this piston back in its ring in its rings and its barrel and I'm going to get everything set up and then we'll be able to pop the motor together okay okay so as you can see we've now got cylinder more or less lined up flat side to the middle and push tourist pin through and then you can look through and see that everything is all right and then uh, okay so now we've got the two cylinders on turn the and put the keepers on stop them from moving and then you turn the engine through 180 degrees so that the rods come out all right everything is nice and clean and all set up and ready and I'm just uh, preparing up the pistons and we're going to drop them in okay um, you will find a longer set of pliers very useful for doing this and you must be absolutely sure that that circlip is in yeah I know that little circlip is absolutely in its land so that when you compress it just a tiny bit it'll turn because the gudgeon pin wrist pin gudgeon pin is free to move a little bit on its axis okay so I'm now going to prepare these two up with our decompression rings and build the motor up again this time it'll be flat side to the left see the little arrow a little arrow that's to the front so we do the same thing and this time we put the gudgeon pin the wrist pin in from the right you see from the outside keep life simple okay now I get on with that okay so now we have the last two pistons prepared ready to go as it were left and right and we've turned the engine through 180 degrees put keeper nuts on obviously and everything is clean and ready to go so now we can slip that in So that has to go all the way in. You have to be able to see where the circlip is going to go, and then you position the circlip. And there we go. Look, you can see the rim there. That's where we're going to put the circlip now. this with the big ones and the slightest twitch it should move. There we go. See? That's that. 
it's good now that can now I take a soft mallet and a block of wood like that and put the keeper nut on and don't forget to put on the cool tin underneath the engine tin where the one that goes underneath you must do that well now before the heads go on though right okay I'm going to do the other side now and that's it right now I'm going to go and I'm going to put the music back on because I can't have copyright music while I'm working. You can have music while you work but not music while you record. Right now. So now we have the bottom tins in place. Alright and take take a bit of time fitting them and make sure that the tinware is nice you see and they've got a cut out on these ones they've got a cut out to fit the nut that fits through but they're not handed on a C2 they're not handed there's the no seven though one one three what's that right anyway I'm going to fit my oil pipe in a minute. Now, again, look, you see, and it's going to nestle nicely and be all, you know it's right when it clips on and it's good and parallel and holds on nicely. There we are, okay. So then the next thing, well, I'm going to put on my oil filler pipe because now's a good time to do it. And then afterwards we start looking at preparing getting the heads, the cylinder heads, ready to install. And to get the cylinder heads ready to install, we have to have the push rods and the push rod tubes with all their rubber gaskets and everything ready beforehand. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Now then. going to start talking about getting ready for cylinder heads right cylinder heads you're going to need your push rods checked that they're clean they're straight and they're wrong I would take the rocker bar and use now as a time to slacken these off make sure everything moves nicely because you're all going to be obviously setting it up with new cylinder heads push rod tubes push rod tubes are often neglected and people say oh it's a weak point on beetles they always leak and so on they don't but my experience is if you just go out and buy a brand new set of stainless steel tubes they're very very long and just because you've fitted new ones and just because you fitted seals doesn't mean you're going to get a very good fit because effectively they're offset okay so there is no reason this is actually a second hand set and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to recover them and the way i recover them is this the idea is to make them a little bit longer once they've served once and you know which one's which it makes life a lot easier 
Now how do you recover them? How do you get a bit of spring back without going too far? What you do is you get yourself a junior hacksaw, you know, and these little baby things, but you put the blades on the top so that you've got a sort of a very small file, or a very small divider. And then all you've got to do And you go through all of those, and it'll appear with any rubbish and oil and so on in there. And that opens up. You see, that one now drops in. That one now drops in. This one. Ugh. There we are. And each one you do, it brings it out. You only want to gain. What, that? Just so that it compresses nicely and stays in shape. Genuine Germany. Um, and that it stay in shape and... Uh, so that when you put the seals on and they're going into the between the head and the block you can line everything up nicely so that the seals aren't forcing and stuff like that now then uh, what else shall we have a look at I know cam followers now on my knees oh dear Right, cam followers. These are hydraulic cam followers on a CT and on a two liter. They're all the same and so on. Basically they either work or they don't. And the important thing is to look to see that there's a little hair circlip, which is even smaller than the ones in the pistons, which must be in place. And can you see that there's a hole in the middle? And what's gotta happen is that the push rod has to land in there. And when you're putting the engine together, and you start off and it's it's very easy you see for the push rod to sort of to do this right and uh, what you want to be able to do is to look down the push rod tube and make sure the push rod really is set in the thing because what you don't want it to do is go out at an angle and break or damage the little hair clip spring because then there's nothing to to hold the whole thing together okay so that's that now I'm going to get the sun dead out of the box. And I'm going to go and put the music back on. What's it now? Right. Now, what we're going to do is, before we put the cylinder head on, is we're going to check the deck height. Because remember, I've put a little compression ring in there. Right, so to check the deck height, I have my piece of true steel and my gauge and my calculator. There we are. Now then, to date the deck height, you've got to remember that the axe of the piston is like that. Okay, so we're going to take it dead centre. So what you do is the cylinder is cramped down onto the block not over tightened as you can see it's just keeper washers and so on all right we know what this is start again start at zero There we are. I think we're quite happy with that. So we've got 43.53 and 45.93. Right. 45.93 minus 43.53 equals, gives me a deck height of 2.4 millimeters. Oh, that's rather interesting because that will allow me to run at a lower compression. And these figures, to get the uh, compression ratio, you can look these up on the internet, which I shall do. Okay, now then, meanwhile, 
Uh, we've been getting the pistons ready. So, uh, oh goody, I can put the music back on. Okay. So, we're getting ready now to put the cylinder head on. Plugs are out. I'm still keeping the keeper nuts on just here and there, just in case. All the nuts and bolts are ready. The push rods are ready. The push rod tubes have been grown a little bit like this just to gain a bit and then where the seam is I mark the opposite side so that, that will be on the underside so we'll have less chance of a leak okay uh, now then before you wang the heads on you must prepare the case studs okay why because you're going to torque the cylinder heads down to a given number of newton meters or foot pounds and if the threads themselves are dirty or bad or burred galled up whatever then you're not going to get a proper reading so here's how to do it it's an in this case ct modern eight millimeter stud it's an eight millimeter die by 1.25 it's an 8 by 1.25 thread and the handle is just cut down that way you can reach in between right go forwards and then go backwards and then you will find that those nuts just spin on for the tweaky tweaky ones that you can't get to just put the die on and then with a pair of pliers it's a little bit slow you know but down you go and back you come and you do the job properly and then once they're all nice and clean you then what I like to do is I like to just tension up the studs as you can see it's not a very sophisticated piece of kit just put it on and just a little eat just no more than that so that they're not going to undo when they're being uh, the cylinder head is taken off again eventually and also it sets it down nicely uh, then we're going to once all that's done then the cylinder head is offered up push rod tubes are dropped in with push rod tube envelopes and uh, and then we'll take it from there right back to the music okay Steve Earl now then <coughs> okay studs all prepared everything done you now slide the cylinder head on but you leave can you see the gap see the gap there right that is so that you can easily fit the push rod tubes see to the bottom little demonstration these all been checked and cleaned now they're on a CT and a water box it's less a boxer they're it, they have the compressible beetle type push rod tube however this washer is bigger than that washer okay and then we have the delicate job <laughs> of just getting in past and then just drop the tube down all right no more and then we do the same thing And then we start lining up the head and I'll show you how to do that. I'll do these two and then I'll show you how to do that. Right, so that's the tubes just loosely placed in. And remember the, the push rods are there only literally just to hold the tubes up in place. So it's just, everything's just rested on. You didn't hear that okay so what we're doing now is we're fitting the engine together squeezing it gently because we're getting all these tubes nicely lined up and to make sure that everything is just so and what I do is you see 
that one will be a bit offset so what we do is as you squeeze up gently I'm just working on this side at the moment as you squeeze up gently if you see one you look well at the, the bottom <coughs> the big oil seals are never a problem but you see for example that one could do with a little bit of a lining so while it's not tightened up you can drop that in there and we just give it a little bit of help you know there like that okay same with that one Yeah, now that way might as well finish off while we're at it that's pretty good that one actually right okay that way the seals are nice and centered so that when you eventually compress the thing down and so on right uh, and you have marked the seam i.e. on the top side of the tube and you've got them all lined up at the bottom and so on uh, right, and then once you've got uh, this just a little bit, just tight, just caught up and so on, I just put, on the outside, there's always plenty of room on the studs, I put the washer and the nut and just spin it down as little as possible. When you're starting it off, because of the spring, because of the spring effect of the tubes, you have to crank it up with the strap and then you can just spin these nuts on and then you can just gently tighten them down so there we are uh, and now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side uh, so uh, you see it's just exactly the same thing nothing complicated everything to line up and make pretty okay back to the music okay so as you can see, it's still coming out of the oil filter. Um, it's now got all the bolts and nuts rather, and their washers are on the studs. The tubes are in. And as you can see, that by using the little wongling bar and getting them to the seals, the seals are all nice and flat. And as you can see, it sort of does that and so on and so forth. Same thing both sides. Okay, so uh, now for Beetland Type 2 owners, just make sure that the four threaded holes are clear. And then you'll be able to loose fit the bottom tinware, that one, and that one, and don't forget that if you have painted them, um, run the six millimeter tap through, it makes life so much easier. Uh, so that's about it for Beetle people. Um, for CT people, uh, you put the oil filler tube, and I'll put the engine crossbar on as well because it's so easy to do now. So there we are. So then after that, we can turn the engine back on its base uh, and then start now seating using the rocker gear, these rocker tubes, because as you can see, I'll try and give you a little demonstration. This one was doing it nicely. Uh, see? You think you've got it in? Oh, look, it's solid. Whoops. Oh, look, it's solid. And it's not, though. You see? Look. So you've got to be careful when you put in these in, because otherwise, like I said, you'll hit the side of the tappet and it won't do it any good at all. Well, there we are. So, once again, it's back to the music. Well, there we are. Hello again. We're now going to start tightening down the cylinder heads. 
and just making sure that it all goes together smoothly and nicely okay now the way I do this is remember you've got on top and on the bottom and on the bottom they've got much more of the spring effect of the push rod tubes so what I do is I start out just with 15 millimeter in this case wrench and I just gently go around until everything just touches look I'll show you all right you see that one's just on all right so we'll just wind that up a little bit there we go take that up a little bit So, and we just you just take the head down slowly and gently all right I'll stop on this one for the moment because I'll do this in a minute I'm just showing you so now this is where you want to be that is to say you've got a little bit of stud showing on the top and they're more or less flush on the bottom and you must use the proper washers right now before you start and you do the other side at the same time and before you start um, talking the head down have a look to make sure that the washers are nicely seated in the middle for example that one there is too far over to the right okay so we give it a little knock up a bit more There, you see? Now, this one here is too low. Little nip, no more. Let's, oh no. That's better. There we are. That one, that one wants to go this way a bit. felt like it moved very easily oh no a little bit more it's misleading there uh, whoops there we are. not too enthusiastic there we are you see just go around and make sure that one's okay that one's a little bit south you see uh, it's not tightened up that's why Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Just we're not doing talking. Look, um, just my it's just my wrist. So ever so gently, it's just to knit the thing up. No more. Okay, and we just check that everything has just got one newton meter. <laughs> Nothing. Right there we are. 